Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week, here on In-Depth Outdoors. Oh, yes, big walleye, super taker. <laughs> big fish. Oh my goodness, bad monster, monster pocket. <laughs> We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Got him. All right. That's what smallmouth fishing is all about right there. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. And on today's show, uh, we're headed to Mille Lacs Lake to fish with Will Roseberg. And why I think this show is important is uh, it's intended to give walleye fishermen a tool that they're gonna need to be consistent throughout the entire walleye fishing season. Now, as walleye fishermen, we know that very often early in the season, May and June, many of our walleyes will be caught in shallow water. And then once those fish leave the shallows, many anglers will start to struggle. Their success rate, their catch rate starts to drop off fairly quickly. It doesn't need to be that way. Uh, the pattern is very simple to put together once you understand that very often these walleyes will leave the shallows and go out over soft bottom basin areas to chase bait fish that have moved to these soft bottom areas to feed on bug hatches. And that's the case here on Mille Lacs Lake. But by no means do I want any person watching this show to think that this presentation is limited to Mille Lacs Lake. Uh, the week before we filmed the show in July with Will, I was out in South Dakota fishing with Quentin Beerman, and we used this exact same presentation to troll jointed number five shad wraps for suspended walleyes out on the lakes near Webster. So this presentation is a universal presentation. So if you're able to add this basic approach to your arsenal of tactics that you use throughout the course of the year to target walleyes, you're gonna be much more successful. And now one of the things that I should point out is very often when you're on a suspended walleye bite, what you're gonna see is a very large average size of the fish. And as walleye anglers, I know that's something that I like. So stick around. This is a show for any walleye angler that wants to improve their consistency throughout the course of the year. Look at this. You got that one, Will? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you keep working out here in these boats, you know, when you're trolling, always checking lines, switching colors, and good things happen. A lot of guys get bored trolling, and really, if that's the case, you're really not staying engaged in the whole process. Yeah, as you speak, we've got a clicker going off, letting yeah. the board out. And We're I did shorten up that this. lead core line, the lead core rod. Letting that back out. That's some of the best fishing is when it's crazy. I love it when it gets insane in a boat. Two or three fish at a time. And you know, there are ways that I would prefer to catch fish. I mean, I love pitching jigs, casting crankbaits, but this time of year, you get into midsummer, and particularly on bodies of water where if you don't get any wind, you're just not gonna catch very many fish unless you troll like this. Get out away from the structure, use boards, to get the bait out away from the boat. It's a fairly universal pattern as well. I mean, this isn't just isolated to Mille Lacs Lake. Uh, we'll take this same very pattern and we'll run around to bodies of water all over the Midwest. Small bodies of water, big bodies of water, stained water clarity or really, really clear like we're here on Mille Lacs. And it just flat out works. Kind of figure about second or third week in June, most years, this pattern really kicks into high gear and it lasts all summer long until the water temperatures start to drop again in the fall. When what we're doing now, James, it's the end of July. This is a, it's this been is a good 85 fish. degrees or hotter for probably 15 out of the last 20 days. The fishing has slowed down everywhere on the lake. You hear a lot of people that said they caught two or three. There really is no truth to the concept of the midsummer lull. You know, uh, this is the time of the year where walleyes are going to feed the most heavily, water temperatures are the highest. Their metabolisms are really juiced up. And what's happened is, you know, anglers get so caught up in the uh, concept of targeting structure, uh, points and breaks, and that's not where the food's at right now. The food's out here on these basin areas. Uh, areas of the lake that have a real soft bottom, you've got all kinds of bug activity, the bait fish follow, and of course the walleyes are right behind them. 
And this is very much a universal pattern. I don't care if we're talking big body of water, small body of water, stained water clarity or clear. At some point in the year, a lot of the big fish, particularly walleyes, are going to move out and be very susceptible to a wall, a trolling pattern like we're using today. Will, this thing is either uh, coming in sideways or this is a big fish. No, I hope it's uh, the latter. Yes. What we're fishing here are really big lures. When the fish get hungry, one big meal can mean food for a day where if they have, we're catching the smaller bait fish, they have to eat a lot more of it. This is a big fish. You want to grab so, a scoop? So going with the, uh, the big tail dancers, the deep thunder sticks that are six, eight inch long baits, uh, really pays right off here. in the warm weather. Here he comes. Nice. Woo. And he's on. And that's why we grabbed the scoop. Oh, look at this dandy. Real nice fish. Clean, heavy looking fish. It's filled out real well. Been eating real good out here. This is what brings me to Mille Lacs. This is a trip where we're actually keeping track of the number of fish that we're going to catch. Uh, I, I turned 40 yesterday. The goal is to catch 40 walleyes, one for every year. This is number nine and a very, very nice fish. Drop him back. That's the nicest fish of the day so far, Will. Way to go, James. Yeah, that one was pushing 27, if not more. If uh, that ends up being my birthday fish, the biggest fish of the trip for me, I'm all right. That, was, we, a, that was a dandy. Do we get to count two on a clicker for that no, size? No, I think, I think we're limited to one, but I, I do get your point. That was a, that was a dandy. Nine. <laughs> a pair of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, we fish and tackles Authentex Plastics. The Moxie with its thin profile, beefy belly and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow. Producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeFishAndTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. This just in. Search now over for one suspect found hiding under a brush pile. Suspect was taken into custody and released this afternoon. Officials credit the apprehension to the new Markham underwater camera technology, which found and caught the suspect. Markham has really taken the lead with their on-screen displays for temperature, depth, and direction, helping you get to the fish quicker. In other news, a missing walleye was captured today, once again caught red-handed on a Markham camera. Stay tuned for more news from the Markham Underwater Network, where we seek, find, and capture the lake's most wanted. I mean, here's why these fish are out here. Here's a great example. You just look at the fish finder. It's just loaded with bait. The amount of tulipy and shiner minnows and shad that are out here are... Buffet, 100% buffet. Trust your electronics. You have to find the bait fish. That'll, you'll find the game fish associated with the bait fish. And so there's a lot of similarities to fishing, you know, all that structure, because you're still looking for the same thing. You're looking for fish along the bottom. Here, primarily, we're looking for good bait fish sign. Show me, show me the food. We'll catch the fish because we know they're going to be nearby. No, that's a great point. If you don't have good electronics, it's pretty tough to come out here because there's a lot of water. But uh, if you trust your electronics, it can just be a lights out day. Chiquita, banana, fish. There we go. We, we got, got a board fish. I think you marked those ones on the graph. I think I did too. You called that about two minutes ago. There's some fish. Oh. About 45 seconds. This one's the uh, Purple Clown Flash TD11. This is a pretty good fish. <laughs> Ready? Nothing more exciting than the first couple of the day. I'd like one over on this side of the boat. That's why I picked the right side. This is a right side win, can't you tell? Yes, clearly. <laughs> you know what people really need to understand about this pattern is we're not fishing structure. We're fishing actually well away from any type of bottom contour change between here and the next piece of structure is probably close to a mile. It's kind of a crazy way to fish. If you grew up fishing rocks, you grew up fishing brake lines, to come out here and do this sometimes can be a little intimidating. It really is not that much more difficult. You just kind of have to come out, you work a little bit. Once you find a school of fish, this can be just fantastic. Lights out. Now that fish creamed that bait. There, right on the front hook. That's what you want to see. Purple clown flash. TD11. This seems to be a real hot color out here when we're fishing the uh, open basin because the fish are after tulipies. I might have to rethink my color choice. It's a beautiful fish. It's got a real green color. It almost has a blue yeah, tail. It turquoise. Looks, it's like a Lake Winnipeg walleye. Beautiful fish. That's why we come here, buddy. Long, big fish. Quick, get it back here. Don't want it out too long. 
One thing that you have to remember out in the deep basin trolling is you always have to revive fish before we let them go. Make sure we get a good release. Off she goes. Straight down. Love it. How many feet back on that? 133. Very cool. Don't forget to put that one on the counter. I'm gonna Thanks, James. I'm gonna switch over to a TD. All right. Fish number three. We're starting to see a pattern here. Two fish on a purple clown tail dancer 11, yep. and uh, one on a storm deep thunder stick. So far, the trolls 215. It Zero. just has not got any, which is funny because last time that was the hot lure. Hot as a pistol. Now, a lot of people try to make lead core sound a lot more complicated than it is. Uh, think of it as one big long sinker. It's a line with a lead filament inside. Uh, we're fishing 15 pound suffix lead corp. And here on Mille Lacs, what we'll do is we'll spool up five colors of lead corn. A color is uh, every 10 yards changes to a different color. It's a way to keep track of how much line you've got out. So out here on Mille Lacs, fishing the crankbaits that we're using today, you're gonna need somewhere between two and a half and three and a half colors to get that crankbait right where you want it with a 30 foot leader. Now you can use a braid on that leader. A lot of guys like fluorocarbon. I've tried both. I've not noticed a, a, you know, the catch rate to break one way or the other, so uh, that's angler's choice there. But lead core, don't be afraid of it. It is such a tremendous tool. Uh, allows you to get a crankbait down on a shorter amount of line and hold it at a very precise depth. Out here in Mille Lacs, that's very important. And obviously, it works. Just look at the fish finder. It's just covered with, with bait fish. Uh, there are some larger fish visible within um, uh, the sonar cone that's beneath the boat, but very often what happens is we can see the bait fish. The bait fish don't spook out away from the boat, but the walleyes that are up off the bottom, very often as this boat goes overhead, they'll peel off of the sides. We'll see fish on our electronics, but we have to accept the fact that for every fish we see right below the boat, we know there's more fish off of the side. So that's where the planer boards on so many days, particularly if it's calm, they really come into play. You'll catch the vast majority of fish on your boards on a calm day. Today with the wave action we've got, uh, I would expect at least uh, the, the lead core to go, you know, one for one with the boards. If not, catch more fish off the, uh, the lead core. There's some nice fish in, in the water column below the boat. Another thing, when you're covering water in the basin like this, the fish are not always relating to the bottom. So a lot of times what we're doing right now, for instance, is we've got one a little bit higher on the board, looking for those fish that might get pushed away from the boat or that are higher in the water column. You've got your lead core down about four feet further than mine. So yep. we kind of try and cover as many levels as we can, as well as spreading out the baits. And then once we get it zeroed in, then you can kind of start to move similar bring types. Everything bring everything. Bring them to the level. right depth, get the right colors going. But at least in the beginning, we're running three different lures, three different depths. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat, and Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. Oh, I pulled it about six feet forward, let it go, and as soon as that crankbait come tight again, whack! It can be huge, you know, when you're not catching fish, always just changing the level. One or two feet up makes a big difference. Well, we're catching fish, so I'm gonna keep doing that because I want to catch a lot of fish. All Basically, right. what we're doing there is we've got the rods in the rod holder, and we'll go past a likely looking pot of fish, and we'll wait a few seconds, and we'll pull up on the line, create about six, eight foot of slack, and just let it go, make sure the line doesn't catch on anything, and that crankbait pauses, and when it starts to move again, that fish that was eyeballing the bait, that's when they smoke it. I don't think people realize if they could see all the fish that are looking at their lure without hitting it. Hundreds. And you go through so many schools of fish, they all see it, they might be following. As soon as it changes direction, they think it's trying to leave or trying to escape. Wow. It just causes a strike right away. I'm gonna move mine up and see if we can get a double. That'd be cool. 
I don't think this thing is a uh, world beater. Let's be honest though, James. Big or small, we want to catch them all. You got a little bit of a rhyme thing going today. Working for Hallmark. That one's putting a pretty good bend in your rod there, James. The number 11 purple clown flash tail dancer doesn't catch small fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Oh, that turned out to be a pretty good fish, James. That's a dandy. He was uh, playing possum on you. Here we go. Sweet fish. Uh, kind of on a roll with that number 11 tail dancer. Out here on Mille Lacs, we got real clear water and that purple color. Day in and day out, it's real tough to beat. Purples and blues, you'll occasionally get a day where real bright colors are the ticket, but more often than not, natural patterns match those tulipies. There's one. James, I got a good one going. <laughs> nice. Does it qualify as a double if you're just releasing yours? Well, I still have him. <laughs> This is a double. I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched, but this feels like a decent fish as well. I'm going to grab that lead core rod. If you can move that for me, thank you, sir. Absolutely. We're getting into a real nice caliber fish now. James, this one is really pinning the board to the water. I think it's a pretty good fish. Well, I've throttled down, so we're not going quite as fast. Whew, nice. Well executed, kept reeling the whole time. Here we've got three nice fish on the locator. Oh, this is what I love about open basin trolling. Once you do finally start to get them patterned, it can be a yep. wild ride. It's not as big as I thought. It's cooked a little bit on the side. He's in the cheek, yep. Definitely a uh, legit hook, but... Yep. Ha. Well, that's why we need to net them. That fish would have been gone. Oh, They're coming in real so feisty. feisty. Gosh, that little guy sure had some spunk. He's only a 24-inch, 23-inch fish. Sure. Well, he's got some uh, shoulders to it, though. So. All right, let this guy go. Yeah. Happy birthday to me. I'm not going to say the number out loud because some consider it unlucky. How, uh, how's your birthday going so far, James? Is it a good trip? I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. All right. I'm a little worried that you, uh, you're you gonna get worn out here now that you're getting up there in age with all these fish. <laughs> I'm not a quitter. You think you're gonna be able to handle about 25 more of these? Well, I'll probably need to take like a Geritol or something to get me through the day. Okay. You're probably too young to even know what that is. No, no, I know exactly what it is. My, my, option, grandpa, my grandpa used to take it, I remember this. I should not have said anything. Uh, I had two options today when I woke up. One was to mow the lawn, honest and truly, it's been, a little overdue, yep. or come here and do this. I did not really give it a second thought. Oh, there, he smoked that. That one is not fooling around, James. That was a good collision. Yeah, there's oh. a fish on yours. We oh. got a double, James. <laughs> this can is you, when trolling uh, gets interesting. Can you unhook me while you're holding that? Ready? Yep. That's as smooth as I can do it. <laughs> James is holding a fish, reeling in the third line, Popping boards. Well, he's popping a board and I'm landing a fish. It's insane and I love it. <laughs> uh oh, we're coming over towards yours, James. I've got a net ready for if you want it. Boosh. Good man. There we go. Here's players. No, it's it. hooked good in both hooks, but not that bad to come off. Oh, there we go. We're getting close to doing them two at a time every time. I know, that's two in a row. Yep. I'm gonna let this one go and then get ready to net yours. Absolutely. Oh, this might be another hand scooper. We've kind of got that down. This, in a nutshell, is why you troll midsummer. The guy can spend a lot of time fishing Lindy rigs or spinner rigs middle of the summer and not catching a lot of fish. You get this pattern figured out, you can do it hand over fist. This fish is going nowhere. When you see a fish with a tail dancer hooked like that, looks like he's uh, trying to eat a hot dog in one bite there. That's what we like to see. Now both of those fish were, were hooked on the front hook, which means this is a pattern they're really going for. And yesterday I happened to give James a call and said, James, last weekend when I was fishing, I lost one of my purple clown flashes. Can you bring a couple extra? God, I'm glad you did. Sweet number two fish. Back you go. There you go, sweetheart. <laughs> this is getting fun. <laughs> so you want to know what I did for my birthday? right here. Last night, uh, my lovely wife fixed lasagna, made me a chocolate cake, and today I get to come out and catch walleyes on Mille Lacs.
of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, Be Fish and Tackle's Authentex Plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly, and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow, producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeFishandTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. key to becoming a good angler, a good troller. Uh, you're constantly in the hunt, in the search for that pattern. It's going to be speed, it's going to be depth, and it's going to be lure. And once you get all the little uh, uh, refinements all brought together, things happen. It's almost like magic. And when you're just a little bit off, a little clues like uh, fish that hit, they're on for a few seconds, they're gone. Or where those fish are getting hooked up on baits, if they're barely hooked on that back hook, you know you might be close, but further refinement is needed. And I like to think of it like it's a puzzle, James. Yep. There's a whole bunch of pieces, you just have to fit them together and you'll find the right pattern. All right, we're coming up on the danger zone for the walleyes, not us. Oh, there, that just got crushed. Nice. I think what I have is a smaller fish that's really aggressive. You can tell by the smile on my face, though, the little ones are just as fun to catch. Yep. Boy, this thing is real feisty. I love it. It's giving me head shakes left and right. They're the real fast head shakes. Yep. They're not the uh, the big whopping ones I want. Oh, it's just hooked on the back hook. I can feel that crank. It's not a half bad fish, bud. No, it got a little bigger the closer it came. I just switched over to the Storm Chrome Perch. Got it? Oh. Woo! Oh, look at that fish. And scoopage. How about a player's? Oh, that's not a bad fish at all. No, and that's a real good looking bait. Um, what we have here is a deep thunderstick mad flash chrome perch. This seems to be one of my go-to lures. When it really shines is if you get in a little bit of choppy water with a bright sunshine, mm -hmm. you get a, a bright flash off of it, but the dark and the waves, it just really seems to shine with a little bit of a broken color. I'm gonna let this one go here real quick. Oh. That one wasn't waiting around. There was no reviving. Gone. <laughs> this basin out in this area is a very consistent depth that might only vary by a foot or two. Uh, let's zoom in. Well, you can see here, 35 foot, and it really doesn't change depth much. You have to go maybe even, I mean, the next depth change is up here at 34 feet. That's over a quarter of a mile away. So that'll give you an idea of how flat and how consistent the bottom is out here in this area. Fish, 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 fish. Never saw that one. That looks like he's got some weight. Indeed. I'm thinking this is gonna be a good fish. That would be a great way to end the day. I hope so. Be my birthday fish. They've all been pretty cool though. I'm gonna grab the Frabel, James, just in case it is a good one. Thank you. You know, I want uh, people to take away from uh, this show, this is a universal technique. Do not forget that. This is not a Mille Lacs technique. This is a Winnie Leech, Lake of the Woods, Mille Lacs, uh, Lake Pepin, Great Lakes technique. Anywhere you go, uh, small body of water, big body of water, you're going to have a significant chunk of the summer where the fish are going to come off structure, get out over deeper water, whatever deeper water might be. It doesn't have to be as deep as you have here. Uh, I fish a lot of lakes where deepest water might be 20, 24, 5, 25 feet. It's deep enough. Uh, during the heat of the summer, so very often these big predators run out over that deepest water, chase bait fish. The bite, if you get on it, get it all dialed in, can be outstanding. I'm gonna kind of walk back, let you take the command corner. Come on, sweetheart. The moment of truth. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Yes, it is. Just back hook. Oh, that's why we were so careful with it. Purple clown flash strikes again. You know, tomorrow you might not catch a single fish on this crankbait, but today, that thing is the ticket. That is a dandy fish. And I can't say for certain that this is my biggest fish of the day, but I do know it is a very, very nice walleye. 
on a hot and steamy summer day fishing with Will. Will, I've had a blast. Put her there, buddy. Hey, I've had just as much fun. Uh, you really can't go wrong when you're catching walleyes like that. <laughs> Not one bit. I'm gonna let this fish go. We're gonna call it a day. Thanks, everybody. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.